If you close your eyes, you can't see them, they can't see you. Oh yeah, they sure can. I see really big objects moving in here. There's a lot of movement down here. We're on the south side of Houston, Texas, Sims Bayou, where Jared last year located 10 cars before he was blown out of the area by a huge ice storm. We're back here to locate these 10 cars, possibly more. The X factor in this, we know we have 12 cold cases in this region. One of them being as old as 42 years old. On all of the vehicles that we mark, we're gonna dive each and every one of them to identify them and possibly one of them may be connected to a cold case. One thing I do know is we need to get into this bayou and clear each and every one of these vehicles that we find today. Jacob, Chaos yeah. Divers, we have Lindsay behind the camera. If you guys aren't subscribed to him, subscribe to this fella here. He's an awesome guy, big heart, helping a lot of people just like we are. Thank you. You ready for this rain today? You possibly have thunderstorms, and it, it, it's gonna be pretty hectic. It's gonna be fun. As I mentioned earlier, we are on the Sims Bayou, Southside, Houston, Texas. One of the things we're working with today outside of severe thunderstorms moving in, gators, lots of gators. Are we scared of gators? Absolutely. <laughs> I like how you said that, absolutely. <laughs> no, we're not, I mean, I don't fear gators. I, 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 grew I don't like them and I'm I grew, not look, scared of them, I just don't want to see them. I grew up in Florida. Swimming in lakes and swamps with gators. They're puppy dogs. The only scary thing about them is once they go under, you don't know where they're at. And you're like, uh. Have you ever seen a gator take like a, a gazelle drinking? Yeah. yeah. And they grab no, it? No. Spin, a gators gators go don't underwater. Take, gators don't death take row. gazelles. That's a crocodile. Uh, now, when you're talking about the crocodile, the crocodile is fiercely aggressive. It doesn't care what it's attacking or what it's eating. A gator, gator has. Uh, they're a little bit more domicile, like a dog, sort of. I've never been attacked by a gator, and I've swam. You get a scene of you a petting of a gator, I'll believe you. Until then, I imagine them. As well, no, a they're they're very skittish. Chief. They're very scared creatures. You see them on the bank. Speaking of, they them, disappear in the water. They disappear. <laughs> they go under. You never know where they're at. If you run into one, they break their neck to get away. People that are fearless of something dangerous, they're the ones that get attacked. Nine times out of ten, when you're in the south in specific waters like this there's always a gator around you just never see him the main thing is in florida when i grew up i was always taught you don't want to get around the bank near where they're resting they will defend their nest and they will chase you how do you know what a nest looks like basically if you see a gator on the bank leave it alone okay. yeah most of the time when you swim by or you drive a boat by they'll go right into the water and disappear they don't want to be messed with 
You want to be left alone. I heard they usually like Listen, to, uh... if you close your eyes, you can't see them, they can't see you. Oh, yeah, they sure so, can. So let me get this straight. You said they are territorial over, like, where they're resting. What if they're resting inside a vehicle? Uh, then we just leave that vehicle alone, sir. No, <laughs> it's fine. They're, 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 they're not, I mean... Can we knock at the door, see if they'll come out? No, hey, look, it's fine. Uh, look, we're... We're gonna do our, we're here to do our job. The gators are gonna leave us alone. We're gonna be successful, and that's all there is to it. No, you didn't. Calm down. It's a boat. It's not a boat, it's a vehicle. It's absolutely a boat. I see really big objects moving in here. It's okay. It's all right, they're just puppy dogs. Underwater puppy dogs, okay? Oh, mode. Oh yeah. I think we just passed over a vehicle right there. But we are going to run a, probably about 80 feet in either direction. And I think that should do it. Right now we're at 50. Deep. A lot of stuff on the bottom here. Oh, we got a car. Got a car right there off that tree. We're gonna go over here and get over it. Right off the tree, right there, out. Yeah, we're coming up on the tree. There it is, right there. See it? Look at that. Beautiful car. Should be running right into it right now. Pick your magnet up. Up, 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 right there. You should be on it right now. Yeah. You're on it? Hard? I'm on it. You got it for sure? Yep. Good job, Carson. Good job. Here, take this and I'll tie up the buoy. Don't drop the buoy, Doug. There you go. <laughs> All right, we got that marked here. I think we got about four cars marked. You like marking cars. Mark, marking the car, feeling the magnet, and you can feel the difference between like the bottom, the water, and like what you're hitting. Hitting? Yeah. Like watching it, like I didn't understand how you'd feel, but I feel like it's like the vibrations coming up, bouncing up through the rope. Absolutely. That you're able to tell that it's like solid or not. Correct. Yep. Yep. It's really cool. It's really yep. cool. And there's a difference between a snag and a, like a magnetic lock. I think everyone should try magnet fishing. You know, if you have the means, you got a river, you don't know what's in it. Buy a magnet off of the adventureswithpurpose.com website. Get your own magnet, get your own line, start magnet fishing. Go to your local pond, your local river, see what you can find. Absolutely, man. Because you never know. Yeah. That, that's the cool thing about magnet fishing is you never know, right? You never know what's under your lakes, you know? Being a part of uh, the AWP team, it's making me question everything. What's in my local ponds and rivers and lakes. Yeah. Everything. Make you think twice, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. One more right here. Just crossed over it, right there. Hey, give me a magnet line behind you. Yeah. Make sure you got a magnet. Almost looks like something with a T-top. Yep, 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 yep. It got a real good hook there. SUV, like it might be like a Tahoe or a Suburban. Here it is, here it is. You should be all over, bounce it, bounce it, bounce it. Your magnet's coming right into it. You should be right on it right now. You feel it? It's like over to the left a little bit. 
Yep. Oh yeah. You on it? You got a good strong hook? Good job, Carson. There you go. It's all over. All nice. good, yeah. Let me tie it up and we'll be good to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, let's keep scanning. But we need, we need more. Uh, look at that beautiful hawk that just sat on that uh, excavator right there. Red-tailed hawk. What do you got going on right now, Jacob? So that white one, that white buoy that you see behind me. Yeah. I'm gonna say that's possibly. I mean, I know it's a sports car, but it could possibly be the Chevy Nova we're looking for what it looks like on here. I got my little T-Rex arm, so I can't make it. And My pony bottles in 1958 so it's good as far as what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go down on each buoy one at a time when I get to the car I'm gonna assess what kind of car it is I'm gonna try to make identification license plate emblems if I can get into the vehicle to check for remains I'm also gonna do that as well and I'm gonna do the same methodical process on each and every single car so what I, eventually I'm gonna need another tank because I can't just go down, boom, go down. It's we gotta really make sure that we're we're going through these cars and doing everything we can to identify them. All right, so the first car looked like a sports car whenever I was up watching this sonar. So we'll see what he comes up with. All right, I am, uh, I'm on the front of a vehicle. I am on the front of a vehicle. Sports car's been there quite a while. No front window. No roof. No roof. This is a sports car. That's a nice one. I'm at the rear of the vehicle. Yeah, this car is absolutely unidentifiable at this point. Can you get a plate or anything? No, no I cannot. Uh, there's no plate on the front of the vehicle, there's no plate on the rear of the vehicle. But it does have, it does have flip up headlights in the front. I repeat, flip up headlights in the front. So this is definitely a uh, pretty 90s car. Probably about an 89, 88. I knew it was a big vehicle. It's huge. I'm at the rear of the vehicle. I do have a license plate in hand. I repeat. I have a license plate in hand. I am now going to begin to do a more assessment on the driver's side of the vehicle to see what's accessible. 
so far both passenger side wheels are upside down or completely exposed and structurally sound I repeat structurally sound can you identify Driver's side windows are up. I cannot confirm the passenger side windows are repeat. I'm looking for an emblem. There's way too much debris. There's like some type of you know, hard plastic netting that's bunched up along the front. It's got my single tangled up in it. So I'm going to. I'm going to begin my escape outside. I have the license plate of my vehicle in my hand. I mean, I repeat, I have the license plate in my hand. And I'm going to begin my escape outside. 10 4, coming up. I hear you. Good job. Five, four, two, P, P, six. Okay. The license plate that we have does not come back to the people who are missing on this one, but we will check the others. Yes, this vehicle is completely deteriorated. It's jumped, everything I'm touching is completely breaking up. Our feet is completely breaking up. So this vehicle's been here forever. I can't see anything, you guys have no visibility, there's a lot 
that move right down here. So right now, guys, he's he's using his hands almost like a blind person would 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 read braille. So he's just running his hands across. I'm not for sure how he's seen that blue, but that's good. Sometimes you can put your mask straight up to the uh, car and get a color out. But right now, he's not seeing anything. Six nine nine WJL. We were looking for an Apollo, a Ford Fusion with no license plates, and then the others. There's a, a list of them here, so this is not on the list, but we will check this one also. Jacob, there's three more cars under the bridge that have not been marked. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I can do that. You gotta pull these buoys. You gotta get, you have magnets in there? We're gonna go clear this yellow buoy real quick. Dive her down. There's some big fish in here. It's either that or big alligators. Oop, there's one. Oop, oop, back up, Jacob. Back up. You're getting ready to be on it, like right now. See it? Should be on it. Oh yeah, I'm on it. All right, let go. Here we go. Good job, first nice. try. <laughs> nice. Okay, so supposedly Josh said that there's two more cars here. Yep, right here. You got one? Yep. Nice. That was an alligator that went by. See the fish trying to follow it? Yeah. They're like, I, th I think it's because it's shiny. Oh yeah. They're attracted to the shiny stuff. Let's see if I can drop it right on it. There it is right there. I gotta just find it now. Find the car. Yeah. Okay, stop the motor. I can't. There it is. The wind's the factor. There we go. It should be dropped right on the tire. The bounce it. It's not, it's not locking. It should be right on it. Yep, solid. Hello? So they need you down here, they need help. They need help? Yes. All right, there's another truck right here. What's going on? I don't know. Okay. A lot of diving today, very extremely cold. Uh, out of six of the cars, two of them we were able to somewhat identify so far. We have two license plates. 
I'm gonna make a call in a non-emergency. I'm not gonna call 911, we're gonna call non-emergency because at this point we don't know if these are connected to anything. So once we call non-emergency, they're gonna be able to tell us a lot more about it. One of the cars that we thought was a car was, ended up not being a car. It was a big construction steel. I, I don't even know what it was. Um, we do have more cars here marked. So as cold as I am, Jacob's not feeling good. Uh, we're definitely gonna have to delay this again, but we will be back. But until then, I'm gonna call non-emergency and see exactly what two of those cars are connected to. Hopefully, maybe they might provide some answers. Uh, yes, so, so my, uh, my name is Doug. I'm with the Cold Case uh, Dive Team here. And we're right on the uh, Sims Bayou. Uh, we've located uh, several vehicles underwater and we have license plates to them. Most of the vehicles are un unidentifiable. However, we did were able to remove two plates. Um, so typically in this scenario, you guys come out, run them, yeah. see if they're connected to something. If they are, they are. And we got 13 vehicles in there. I gotta get somebody else out here too. Uh, that yeah, that's uh, that's definitely something you want to consider. You know, I know that's oh, gonna yeah, require sure. a lot of let's, one uh, more phone calls and whatnot. Yeah, let's go ahead and put those on my truck. You gonna be put them on the hood? Oh no, you can't. You can't. They're see. Yeah, they're oh, they're yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah. submerged. Yeah. Okay. So we specialize in sonar. So when we start, we start topside with sonar, and we'll we'll locate the vehicles, we'll magnet line them, and then dive on them to identify them. Okay. All right. Let me call the So so what's going to happen at this point? He's going to make some calls to some superiors um, to you know explain a little bit more of the situation. There's we know of you know 13 vehicles, which is more than we thought we were going to come into this with. We thought we were only working with 10 here in this specific region. However, the back history on this story, um, there's 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 a lot of cars here. Yeah. Do, do they want to pull them out? Um, that's a very political thing. Um, it comes down to funding. Uh, it comes down to their past history with being involved in pulling cars out. And I mean, we've we've ran to that, you know, in, in, in my town of Portland, Oregon, uh, where you know, they, the dive team was really good at locating vehicles, like really good. They were calling them in, they were towing them out, and the towing companies were charging a lot of money. And, you know, the higher ups were basically like, hey, you, you guys gotta, you, you dive guys gotta calm down. And then the dive team told me personally, like they just, they stopped calling the cars in. Yeah. You know, um, and then that's, as you guys have seen over the last three years, we that's where we pulled out. In. We pulled out over 30 vehicles in the city of Portnell alone, solved two kill cold cases in doing so. Yep. Um, so it's, it, it's a funding thing, but you know, it, it shouldn't be about funding when these vehicles are hurting our environment. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of vehicles here in Houston and, and, and they need to come out of the river. They need to come out of the bayou, come out of the lakes. Yeah. Come back stolen. Okay. The stolen vehicle. Yeah. So, uh, Which is common. I mean, it will, I, I say it all the time. No vehicle is underwater for a good reason, you know. So it's usually stolen, you know. We just want to make sure it's fraud. not. We're just making you know. sure it's not connected to a missing person case. Yeah, so. yeah. I just got off the phone with our command center. He's gonna call our dive team, see if they want to come out here. Okay. Um, then I'll keep you guys updated as we go along. All right? Yeah. Thank you, Doug. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I I doubt the dive team is really gonna to want to do anything. Uh, just because, I mean, they've been, if, if there's no identification that I've been able to do, they're definitely not going to be able to get anything more unless you get in there and you actually pull the cars out. Pulling the cars out is the only thing that's going to give you anything else to go off of. Because at this point, they're unrecognizable. There's no emblems. There's no plates on them. It, it could something be in them somewhere. Absolutely. I mean, you don't know unless you pull the cars out. Okay, so I just got off the phone with our, the sergeant from the dive team. Yeah. Um, he stated that they um, they come out all the time and they do the sonar as well. So he said, right now with those plates, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna be recovering those vehicles. Um, they'll come out in like a week or two, and they'll they'll run this whole area and they'll check all the vehicles because a lot, they've said they've. I can imagine they've done like every inch of this. Yeah. And they say a lot of these vehicles are just too destroyed, too far gone to be even try and pull out. And, and, I, just and, start I, and I saw apart. that on, on a few of them when I was down there. Yeah. So that was his main thing. So they're going to come out in like a week or two and they'll dive they'll dive them all themselves. The yeah. So I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to send him the location from that bridge 
to here. And they'll come out and yeah. they'll okay. they'll troll it all. Yeah, I, I appreciate your guys' response and, and coming out and looking at those plates. So two of the vehicles definitely came back stolen. There's still a lot left to be told here in Houston. We're gonna put a good word in through these officers and you guys. If you guys know anybody connected to, to the local Houston hierarchy here, involved in law enforcement or the local government, let us know, put them in touch with us. We would really like to organize, help and clean up the waterways and possibly solve quite a few cold cases. Today, I'm super cold. Thank you to Jacob for all that you did with marking the cars and running the sonar, I really appreciate it. It's the least I could do since I couldn't dive. I, I wanted to make sure we got everything covered and that's what we did. Yeah, so I know you're not feeling well, so. And, and it's really cold out here. I'm, I'm freezing, I can't wait to get out this dive suit. If you haven't already done so, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, like and share, leave a comment, let five friends know about it. After all, we are out here, volunteer. If you have a chance to donate, please go over to ventureswithpurpose.com. This is what keeps our wheels rolling. Thank you guys for all your support. We're back on the road. We're heading to Hot Springs, Arkansas.